So good morning everyone. So today I would be discussing about uh, acute diarrheal disease in children. So we all know that diarrhea is one of the common causes of OP visits and admissions as far as children is con children are considered. So what is a diarrhea? Diarrhea is defined as increase in frequency, fluidity, and bulk of stool when compared to the normal bowel habits of an individual. And we call it as an acute diarrhea when the diarrhea lasts for less than seven days. Now, what causes diarrhea? We need to know that most of the diarrhea are due to viral infections like rotavirus, Norwalk virus, etc. Rotavirus constitutes about 40 to 45 percent of diarrheal cases in India. There can be other causes like E. coli and Vibrio cholera also. But since most diarrheas are due to viral origin, that is why watery diarrheas are not treated with antibiotics unless you are suspecting a cholera. Now, what are the complications? As expected, the major complication is dehydration. And when the dehydration is severe, remember, it can lead on to death. And it can also, diarrhea can cause malnutrition. Because during the period of diarrhea, the absorption of nutrients are impaired. Along with that, there may be inadequate or inappropriate feeding, impaired appetite, and increased catabolism all favors malnutrition. So child with a borderline malnutrition may become severely malnourished once he develops a diarrhea. Now, how do you assess dehydration? Even though there are many things you can ask, look and feel, but the four cardinal signs which tells you the status of dehydration is by looking at the sensorium, the eyes, the skin turgor, and looking at the way the baby is drinking. So if you so how do you look for the skin turgor? Skin turgor, remember, it has to be examined in the abdomen itself. If it is a small infant, uh, you can also look at the AF. A depressed AF is also a sign of dehydration. But commonly, we look for skin turgor in the abdomen, midway between the umbilicus and the lateral abdomen. And it is important that you pinch in the vertical direction, that is in the long axis of the baby, and pinch it for just one second, lift up the whole of skin as well as the tissues under it, and release it and see if you are able to visualize a skin pinch or not. As you can see here, once you have released your finger, if you are able to see a skin pinch, that means skin turgor is prolonged. If this is visible for more than two seconds, you call it as the skin pinch goes very slowly, which is an indication of severe dehydration. So you have to time the skin pinch also. So now, if your baby sensorium is normal, is happy and playful, there's no sunken eyes, the skin pinch immediately disappears after you have released your fingers and the child is drinking normally, that means the child has no dehydration. Now, how do you manage a child with no dehydration? It is plan A. Here, you have three components, that is replacement of the ongoing loss, continue feeding, and also explain the bystanders regarding the danger signs. How do you replace the ongoing loss? The ongoing loss can be replaced using an ORS or home available fluids at 10 ml per kg per purge. Remember, you have to give this using a spoon or if it is a, a bigger child, small sips can be given. Never use a bottle for rehydration. Bottle is the commonest cause why a child develops a diarrhea, so do not use water. At the same time, continue feeding because feeding will repair the intestinal mucosa, stimulate the production of brush border enzyme and prevent malnutrition. Then what are the danger signs that you need to tell them? The danger signs you need to tell them is bring back the child if there is a persistent vomiting, if the urine output is um, he's not passed urine for the last six to eight hours, if there is a blood in stool, the child looks extremely lethargic or running high fever, they need to bring back the child. Now, what about some dehydration? If the child is irritable, has sunken eyes, the skin turgor, you are able to visualize the skin turgor, but it becomes normal within two seconds. And the child is unusually thirsty. Thirst is an important sign of some dehydration. So if any two are positive, you can take it as some dehydration. Some dehydration means that the patient has lost at least seven to eight percentage of fluid. So here you have to correct dehydration, replace the ongoing loss and provide the normal daily fluid requirement. So that is here again. So you have three steps. So how do you correct dehydration? Give ORS 75 ml per kg over four hours. Replace the ongoing loss with ORS 10 ml per kg per purge. 
at the main time never forget to continue feeding especially young infants if you don't provide them feed just giving them only ors can even cause hypernatremia so it is important to continue feeding now after you have completed 4 hours of 75 ml per kg of ors reassess the child if the child has improved with no signs of dehydration you can move the child to plan a advise and discharge them home but if the child after 4 hours still shows signs of dehydration then you have to give him one more aliquot of 75 ml per kg for the next 4 hours and then see the child and decide now coming to why do we use ors or what is the concept of ors or what all things can we use for rehydration because here the child is dehydrated remember whatever be the cause of um, diarrhea whether it is the um, bacteria itself damaging or it is the toxin damaging whatever it is your absorptive capacity of the intestine comes down so you have to know that whenever your intestinal mucosa is damaged it is the sodium absorption that is impaired sodium and water are friends so if sodium is not getting absorbed water will also not get absorbed but fortunately glucose absorption in moderate amount so that is important to understand glucose in large quantity will not be absorbed but moderate amount it is able to be it can be absorbed so we use that principle that is sodium and glucose if given together they can be transported inside the cell using the sodium glucose co transport or sim port so that is the reason why when we are using an ors we always see to it that it has a source of sodium and a source of glucose and once the sodium goes in the water will follow and it is also important to understand that the ratio of these two should be one is to one it is not only the glucose that helps the sodium to come in even amino acid dipeptides tripeptides also help the sodium to come in that is co transport can happen so plain water is not an oral rehydration therapy whereas if you give plain water with food it is an ort because food will contain source of glucose will contain source of amino acids so food with water is an ort plain lime juice is not an ort but lime juice with sugar and salt added to it or kanji water with salt or dal with salt are all ort kanji water will contain carbohydrate dal will contain protein so normally an ors contains equimolar that is equal amount of sodium and equal amount of glucose with 20 milliequivalents of potassium citrate acts as a source of bicarbonate remember if you don't have a market available ors you can prepare at home also you can take 1 liter of water to that add 1 teaspoon salt and 8 teaspoon of sugar or you can take 1 glass of water water to add one pinch of salt and one handful of sugar to make an ors at home in an emergency situation now why is it that every child does not respond to ort or oral rehydration therapy why is that some children require admission that happens if the high if the purge rate is very high or the child is vomiting more than 3 times per hour if there is abdominal distension and paralytic ileus or if the ors prepared is incorrect all this can lead on to oral rehydration therapy failure now coming to the last scenario this is you can see here the child so what is your impression is this child having some dehydration or severe dehydration if you look at you know the child is looking lethargic eyes are deeply sunken and someone has taken a photo and even now you are able to see the skin pinch that means the skin pinch is going back slowly taking more than 2 seconds and he is not at all thirsty he doesn't want to drink is unable to drink all this shows that this is a child with severe dehydration this will happen only when you have lost more than 10% of your fluid that is why for severe dehydration you recommend 100 ml per kg of iv fluid which may be ringer lactate or normal saline ringer lactate is preferred because lactate acts as a source of bicarbonate which is lost in the diarrhea but it a small infant you give it over 6 hours that is 30 ml per kg over 1 hour followed by 70 ml per kg over 5 hours because a small baby may not be able to tolerate rehydration at a rapid rate if the baby is more than 1 year you can give 30 ml per kg over half an hour followed by 70 ml per kg over 2 and 1/2 hour that means half the time that is used for an infant 
you know, what will you do if the child is in severe dehydration? We said it is a medical emergency that can happen. And the child is having vomiting um, and the child is, you are not getting a peripheral line. It is very difficult to get a line. So what can you do? You can put a nasogastric tube and give ORS at 20 ml per kg per hour for six hours. If the child is having vomiting and not tolerating a nasogastric ORS, then you can put an intraosseous needle in the upper end of the tibia and administer IV fluid through the intraosseous route. Remember, for acute diarrhea, apart from rehydration, there is only one drug that is prescribed, that is zinc, and zinc is given 10 milligram per day for children less than six months, and 20 milligram per day for those above six months, and it is given for 14 days. Why do you use zinc? Because zinc enhances cellular immunity. It, it have, produces a higher secretory antibodies. It has an antioxidant property and it accelerates mucosal regeneration. That is why you give zinc because zinc decreases the severity of diarrhea, duration of diarrhea, improves the appetite and growth. And moreover, it, risk, it decreases the risk of subsequent diarrhea and lower respiratory infections for up to three months. That is the exact reason why zinc is given for 14 days. Thank you.